Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to more Kerbals. We have one final mission to send to Charon before we send it on its way to uh, Eve and eventually Gilly. Um, so, like last time, we're going to use actually a really similar launch vehicle, and we're actually going to use the same, um, well, nearly the same um, fuel tank that we did before. There are a couple differences, as you might be able to tell. We no longer have parachutes on this. Um, and the reason why is because the first time I launched this, um, it turned out we were carrying more fuel in it than I thought, so I was considering actually taking it with us, at least partially, to EVE. Uh, to that degree, I have put some scientific devices on the tank, too. So, I want to add... Let's see here. I want to add a couple of unmanned satellites. Two of them, to be precise, but they'll be copies of one another, so we only have to build it once. I'm gonna start with one of the... Whoa! There we go. I'm gonna start with one of those, so that we can detach it from the device. Uh, and it's going to start by using a monopropellant fuel tank, one of these guys. Um, this part isn't entirely necessary for the spacecraft on its own right, but we need to actually navigate it so that it leaves this device and connects to the Charon. So, four of these will do. Pretty standard build so far. And once we finish doing our attaching mechanisms, we can decouple our satellite using a stack decoupler. There we go. Now we move on to the actual satellite piece, and we're going to be using a new type of propellant for this. Uh, remember when I unlocked the ion engines a little while back? Now compared to some of our other rockets which have a high amount of thrust, for example 200, 650 and so on, the ionic th uh, thrust only is capable of about 2, which is not that much. I would not recommend using these for any of our bigger vehicles like this. But if we build a really small craft, then these are useful. And the reason why they're so useful is because they're extremely efficient. They chew their uh, fuel away very, very slowly. So this fuel tank has 700 uh, xenon gas, and it runs on xenon gas. We can, of course, improve that. Um, the other thing that, this, uh, that ion engines use is a lot of electricity. They burn a, um, a ton of electricity whenever they launch or rather when they're burning, but at the same time, that also gives it a lot more fuel to use. So, despite having a very low amount of thrust, it is actually a very, very capable spacecraft, just really small and slow. So if you're patient, and if you don't mind small spacecrafts, then this is the device to use. Uh, speaking of which, the spacecraft uh, ought to have a brain. I'm going to use this pro piece right here, there we go. And while I'm at it, let's add some more uh, xenon fuel. Let's put in uh, about four of them. I'll plop them right down beneath the probe itself. There we go. So that should be a ton of uh, xenon fuel that we uh, can bring with us. And let's bring a couple more batteries, too, because the more energy we have, the faster we'll, we'll, the farther we'll be able to travel. In a single burn, that is. Uh, let's see here. There are complications that arise with that, but we'll get to those later. Of course, if it needs electricity, then it should run on uh, solar panels, so those will help propel it. We could use the, uh, uh, where is it? The radio S tube generators, but these are substantially heavier, I think. Oh. Yeah, they're substantially heavier, which is why we'll be using the solar panels. Closer to the sun, they should still be efficient, too. Uh, of course, where would this mission be without its science? So let's throw some science on here. There we go. The seismometer and barometers, I think, are kind of completely unnecessary for this, since they'll be uh, satellites. But maybe something will happen. Maybe they have to go into like low orbit or something, and maybe they'll be able to get more data there. I'm not sure. I just want to be ready for that possibility. I'm going to put a commutatron on it, the best one that we have, so that it can do maximum amount of science while it's out there. I'm not going to put any mystery goos or science juniors on it, because I don't think they're quite necessary for where we're going, and they're a bit heavy um, for where we're going, too. So we're just not going to bring those, since the Charon already has plenty of them as it is. Uh, I haven't used one of these in a while. I'm going to use a... Uh, a, let's see, a computer flight unit to give us a little bit more data as we're traveling along in our adventure. 
and I would like to use a map set too. I'm gonna move this out of the way first. Here we go. Of course, an orbiter should be a map set as well if possible. That way, I can gather more data. And maybe for stability's sake, let's add in a couple of struts too. We could use about four of them. Attach them right to the xenon gas tanks. Oops. Uh, let's see if I can do this right. There we go. So, it's not much, but that's the entire craft right there. Um, I am going to pull this uh, into a sub-assembly so we can uh, clone it. And I'm going to call this the Channel Wood and Selenitic Probes. In keeping with our uh, naming scheme for the mist, uh, from the mist game. Now then, uh, this is going to be a little bit tricky. Actually, we need to be able to launch these properly into orbit, and because we use this uh, satellite piece right here, we can't simply stack them on top of one another like what we did with the probes. So instead, I'm going to have to be a little bit creative about this. Let me add a uh, let's see a fuselage piece. The fuselage is just a unit. It's just a thing that we can put on. It doesn't have any fuel. It doesn't have any capabilities. It's just a piece of a thing. Um, which suits our purposes just fine. Although, do I have a smaller thing I can add on to this? Anywhere. Do I? Do I? Eh, we're good. Uh, that should be fine. Uh, and I'm also going to add a structural element. For the first time, we're going to be using this. It's called a Rockomax Hub Max. It is a hub for docking ports. Uh, we only need to put two docking ports on this thing, but since we're at it, we may as well... Let's see here. We need two. One for each side, because that's where we're actually going to connect our, um, our satellites onto. There we are. Two should suffice just fine. And Let's see. Actually, you know what? I think we can improve this just a little bit. I'm going to replace that with a smaller fuel tank. Because the fuel tank will let me refuel this lower uh, stage right here. And carrying more fuel means that we'll have a little bit more leeway on our mission. So I'm just going to use a fuel tank. Uh, let's see. From here on out, I am going to add our sub-assembly pieces. The channel wood and the selenitic. By plopping you on that side and doing the same on the other side. Now, this is not a stable craft anymore. This top piece right here is gonna wobble with all of these uh, docking ports that we've put on this. So, we need to remedy that. Fortunately, it's a rather easy fix. Uh, let's see here, I'm just gonna add a few struts down here, plopping them on there like so. So this part's at least secure. Um, and I'm also gonna add some struts on here and bring them up to the top of these xenon tanks. That should be good on both sides. There we go. In fact, yeah, we're good on that side. Uh, let's see if I can add any more. Hmm. Let me cons. No, no, that'll just make it a little bit more unstable. We can do better than that. Um. I'm just not entirely confident that this is stable enough. Maybe if I put these here, and connect to that side. Put this in about the same place, connect to the other side. No, oh, that didn't quite work. There we go. Well, this ought to be stable, I think. Maybe I could put something up on the very top, and that might cut it too. Just a little small piece of something. Like if I just sort of plop it right up here. Connect there. Okay, now this should be about as stable as I can make this. This big web mesh of struts ought to do the security stuff. And the extra fuel that we brought into here too should allow us to have a little bit more leeway. So, uh, there we go. Now I'm just going to try to launch this thing and put it up to Charon. Back to Kerbals! Hello again, everyone, and now it's time to do the final part of our Charon construction. 
First things first, I want to make sure that the fuel tank has about as much fuel as I can put in it before I separate it from everything else. Uh, looking good, looking good. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to separate the uh, satellite delivery piece by decoupling. And I'm just going to use our RCS to push ourselves away very slightly from the actual piece right here itself, just so that I don't accidentally bump into it again. Um, our solar panels are still deployed on this thing, so I have to bear that in mind. Now then, fuel tank, as said before, should dock right there, so let us first push ourselves away. Now then, we're carrying a ton of fuel on this, so this is actually a little bit of a cumbersome build right here, but as long as we can connect to the actual uh, piece right here itself, then we should be fine. I just want to ensure that it is in fact possible. And if it is, we'll see shortly! Okay, and now we're back to this song and dance. Just need to be patient and make sure that we're aiming. I'm gonna quick save just in case anything silly happens here. Gonna push down on RC, yes. And if I'm just patient enough and make sure that I stay on top of the note at any and all costs. I, there we go! Oh, that was actually easier the second time around. Cool! Oh, there's our satellites in join. Now then, uh, I need to be as about as efficient as possible as I can with this. So first of all, let us take all the side fuel uh, canisters first, and I'm going to try to feed them into my main tank here. I realize that we may actually have so much fuel on this thing that we might run into an, uh, a symmetry problem, which is not good. Uh, we may have to dispense of these other uh, these uh, pieces up here a little bit earlier, even though they have some fuel in them, for the sake of ensuring that we have a safe launch. Because if we try to launch this thing a little bit too quickly, or, uh, or rather asymmetrically, then that raises the problem of accidentally going into a tumble while we're trying to go somewhere. And if we tumble, then I can't thrust properly, and then all sorts of beautiful problems arise from that point. The point being, I have probably added too much fuel to this craft, which is not good. All of the fuel that we can put in the chair, and at least for the main uh, tanks, has been put in. Empty, 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 well not quite empty. Okay, so we have a bit more fuel in this canister, and I don't know where to route this actually. We may have to sacrifice it, which is sad, but it's something that we may have to do. So before we do anything else, I'm going to quick save, just in case my staging isn't correct, and I'm going to launch away these upper canisters. So I'm quick saving, one, to make sure that nothing bad happens, and two, that so that I can do something if, if they become a debris hazard. So let's separate first. Hmm. Did that work properly? There we go. This one, having a bit more fuel than the other ones, launches a bit differently, but because they're all traveling in different directions, we should still be safe nonetheless. So there they go. Farewell. You served us a very good purpose. Oh, is that going to be a problem? No, it isn't. Okay. Now, this upper fuel canister up here also has the maximum amount of fuel that it can carry, and for our sakes, we will be carrying it with us to, uh, to Eve, at least part of the way. Not the full way, of course, because, well, I'm a little bit worried that it's going to be slightly unstable with the two docking ports. We're going to have to see how that works, and if it doesn't quite work, then we'll jettison it all together, and it can be its own craft doing its own thing. Since it has science on it, it's still a valid craft, and it has the maximum amount of fuel that it can carry. Now then, we have a bit more work to do, and from here on out, it's more or less self-explanatory. We're going to switch over to the probe here. Uh, and individually put these pieces onto the chair in itself, which is more or less self-explanatory. So let me just do that for you real quick. All right, everybody, we did it. Um, it took us a fair amount of time, but we have now have the entire chair and spacecraft fully assembled. 
So, we've got all those, um, those probes that we were planning to get to, uh, fastened onto the side. And we also have our, oops, we also have our Gillylanders connected to the Charon as well. So, we're more or less good to go. Um, I realize, however, as we prepare for our journey, that I have made a unfortunate error with the uh, fuel tank up here. I was planning on having it uh, do science while in the space between planets, but I forgot to put an antenna on it, which unfortunately means that it will not be joining us to... Rather, it will not be able to do any science or return any science once it gets out there. So... My new plan is to try to get it to crash into... Well, actually, you know what? I'm getting ahead of myself. Because, before we get to EVE, there is actually one other place that I want to go visit. And it's a little bit closer to home. Now, I mentioned earlier that I want this Terran to explore all the planets. And in this case, I mean all the planets and all the moons, too. Now, Charon has not yet visited Minmus, so I'm thinking as we get ready to go there, I'm going to uh, swing the Charon towards Minmus. This is also a little bit of a daredevil experiment. I want to get Charon as close to the surface as, uh, of Minmus as possible without running the risk of hitting it. So we're going to fly extremely close to the surface of the, of the moon, and then spam science when we get there, because hopefully we'll be able to get a little bit more return while we're out there, and then that would be cool because, well, we can then say that Charon has visited yet another place, albeit very briefly. And then from there, it will fly off into the solar system and encounter Eve in a little bit of time. So that's more or less the plan. From here on out, we get ready to go to Eve. Nothing else in between there and here. Except for Minmus. And we're going to have to... Oh, by the way, I was about to say, actually. The fuel tank, unfortunately, won't be able to do, uh, do any meaningful science. But it still has fuel left in it. So rather than crash it into the Earth, I'm going to use its fuel to help us uh, do a flyby towards Minmus. And then I'm going to crash it at Minmus. The thing is, is that because it really wouldn't serve any scientific purpose... There really isn't any particular reason for it to still stick around at that point. And because of the fact that I don't want to clutter up our missions too much, because I think that if we have too many missions, it might cause lag and game malfunctions. So unfortunately, we're going to have to destroy the tank rather than keep it. Sad to say, but at least it will help us get to EVE. Anyway, that journey begins in the next episode. So until then, ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned and good night.